Uh, thank you all for attending another Monday morning uh, Lean Learning Series training. I'm glad to have you all here, all 28 of you. It's great to see you. So today we're going to be talking about bite size lean. It's a little bit different topic than previous ones I've shared. And it's also exciting because Teresa will be joining me to uh, talk through a worksheet that we put together as part of this training that I hope we can use and distribute throughout the organization. So thank you all for coming today and we're going to go ahead and get started. So Bite Size Lean is part of the Lean Learning series. First, I want to start with a definition of lean because lean has a certain reputation depending on who you talk to and depending on what division or section you might be in. Um, what it means in the most basic terms is a popular approach to streamlining processes by eliminating waste, optimizing flow, and continuing to deliver value to customers. So what that has meant to some people is um, a process very similar to um, how we started our lean journey when Fred came to teach us the ins and outs of lean. And what that meant was five-day Kaizans, big facilitations, what it means today is uh, significantly more broad and how we apply lean in DEC uses a bunch of learnings from other schools of continuous improvement and tries to adapt and arrange itself to solve whatever problems need to be solving. So those can mean um, adapting elements of human centered design or results based accountability in terms of how uh, tracks metrics even systems design methodology, which is something that um, we're just now starting to explore, and to make, which I can never remember all of the words to, um, define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. It's a much more data-centric view than Lean takes. But there's also a set of Lean standard tools that we use that you might be familiar with. So. Um, process mapping is the most classic example. Um, you might have heard of SIPOC. Um, there's any number of tools that you can employ, but when I say lean, I mean a structured problem solving method for identifying or eliminating waste. So that structure can come from any of a number of tools or methodologies, but it is centered around the idea of streamlining and eliminating waste. A3 is another classic tool of the lean methodology. It's a structured problem solving method. So there are eight ways in lean. And so when, when we say we're interested in reducing waste, this is kind of what we're talking about. These are the um, non value adding activities. But when you look online at lean, um, most of the waste that they talk about are production oriented. They're based on manufacturing concerns. But they can also apply to in the office work. So I wanna go through each of these and see if anyone can give me an example of one of these. I, I, I sort of have wrote answers that I think are the most classic representations in office work. But does anyone have an example of uh, a waiting type of waste that we might see in the office? Anyone can chime in or uh, type in the chat. Waiting for signatures. Waiting for signatures. That's a great one. Waiting for approvals. Yeah, I think that's the most classic one. Email response time, sure. So, yeah, my classic example of that is definitely approvals. Um, it's time spent sitting on someone's desk where motion isn't happening. So, what are some, yeah, waiting for several chain of command reviews. Exactly. Um, so let's talk about transportation. This one might be a little bit harder to sort of shift a mindset into um, out of the out of the manufacturing floor and onto office. Anyone want to take a guess at what we might mean by transportation when we're talking about a waste in the office? I think I hear typing. This one's a little bit harder and not as obvious as the waiting. We 
we had a process a while back where we had to like walk a piece of paper around to five different people for signatures instead of kind of concurrent. Okay, that's a great example. Um, Annette says having to drive to a meeting you can attend virtually, walking to another floor for a printout, emailing docs rather than directing to files in Y-Drive. Um, I admit it's a little hard to distinguish between transportation and motion. Um, when I talk about transportation, I'm talking about handoffs. So um, in a presentation, it might mean um, handing it off to a dozen different people. It might mean I have to do this part, this part, this part so that so and so can do their part and then they send it back to me and then I send it on to a third person. We see those kinds of things in processes all the time. So you want to try and minimize the number of handoffs. Um, people have been putting in some examples of what I think are um, classically defined as motion in Lean. So um, what motion can also mean is in terms of um, staff, and it takes a lot to train someone on the basics. So turnover is a great example of motion. So you have people leaving and you have people coming in. They need to be trained up. They need to learn. They need to grow. So that imposes a lot of waste because they're doing it inexpertly. All right. So this one, the next one, I'm pretty confident you'll all have examples of. What are some examples of defects that we might find in the office? That one's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Folks, a minute to type in their responses or feel free to chime in over audio. If you don't mind being on the uh, stream after this. Outdated forms, sure. Incorrect invoices that need to be investigated, that's a huge one. All right, those are some pretty classic ones. Um, application error. So basically, any type of form that comes in with bad information, that's a defect, that's rework, that's stuff that has to be redone, or you have to go back to the source and find out the right answer. So it's in our best interest to try and cut out as many defects as possible. How about overproduction? It's a favorite of mine, and it's pretty classically defined in lean manufacturing, but can anyone give me an example of what overproduction might look like in the office? Too many steps in a process? Hours long meetings that could be accomplished in five minutes. I'm sure we've all been to our share of those. Those are some great examples. So duplicate reviews of the same project. Absolutely. So um, printing extra copies of presentations, all great examples of overproduction. So I wrote down reporting, but what I mean by that is unnecessary or repetitive reporting. So reporting the same information that everyone already has and everyone already has access to. So for example, if you built a dashboard that anyone could go and view, having to do a reporting of the same information that's on the dashboard is a classic example of overproduction. All right, uh, non-utilized talent is the next waste. Any suggestions there? You guys are doing a great job. This participation is awesome. I appreciate it. What are some examples of non-utilized talents? The opposite of cross-training. Uh, not matching skills among staff. Don't have a word for it. Yeah, it's it's expertise gone unused. If you have um, a bunch of people working on a project and someone is well suited to a particular task, it is in your best interest to lend it over to the expert because they're likely going to do a process that has fewer defects, less overproduction. They're familiar with pitfalls, trials, and challenges that uh, you might be experiencing. So yeah, we definitely want to utilize our talent. All right, inventory. Inventory is a classic waste in manufacturing. It's particularly important because when you have inventory, you are paying money for that inventory to live somewhere. 
But can anyone give me an example of an office kind of inventory? Vehicles? Sure, if they're not being used, vehicles can certainly be a type of inventory. Bulk old materials that don't get updated. Yeah, I'm sure we all have forms that have seen their fifth and sixth iteration just hanging around, getting used by accident. Where inventory is most classically seen in office situations, it's batching. File storage, things available in multiple places, soft phones, cell phones, underutilized phones. Yeah, so old versions of documents. Yeah, where we see it the most in terms of process is batching. So um, if you are waiting until you have a certain number of something to do something, that leads to a lot of waste and a lot of time wasted. Instead of batching and doing things in batches, lean favors more of a pull approach where when the next step of the process is ready to handle something, it can take it on immediately. It allows for more level setting and it allows for fewer of those. Um, anyone have any of those processes where like everyone's got their heads down working on this time of year when all of this stuff happens right now and everyone's got to be diverted from every other thing they're doing so that they can all work on this one batch process or batch mailing or things like that. Um, those are all classic examples of batching. CDC reporting, okay. Um, the final one is extra processing. So it's easy to confuse that with overproduction. Annual reports, okay. Um, those are examples of uh, extra reporting. You guys getting ahead of me? Or extra processing. For me, it's data reentry. So we see a lot of data reentry where you have to enter things into your data set. And then you have to enter it into your Excel spreadsheet. And then you have to enter it in another Excel spreadsheet so that it can go to somebody else so that it can be mailed so they can be formatted properly. Um, that's all extra processing. So you can imagine a process where you enter it in the database once and then the database dumps it out and you can easily submit it on. So we see these kinds of wastes all the time. And fundamentally, lean is about <laughs> data reentry is a big one. Absolutely. Uh, we spent a lot of time doing all of these ways. And Lean is about using tools and structured problem solving to get them out of the way. So what does a structured, a structured approach look like? So it can mean the classic Lean principles, the kinds of Lean that we practiced in the early days of um, DEC and AOT with a robust A3 being fully guided where a large group works together with understanding the current state, gathering extensive baseline data so we can understand where we are and where we have to go, revise um, processes using value stream mapping, which is the classic tool, or maybe SIPOC if we're okay with a more 50,000 foot view of looking at these things, and then implementation of whatever changes get identified in the event. So, um, these can typically take a year or longer. Some of them are still going that um, I've inherited that are on the three to four year time scale. I'm sure many of you know about some lean projects that are still stuck in implementation. And then tracking and performance using KPIs. Now, it's not to say that that approach is unwarranted or does not have value because it absolutely does. There are problems and there are situations in which it is the perfect way to tackle a big problem with a lot of people in a lot of places. But what it can also mean is utilizing tools and structured activities on a small scale in a short amount of time, either individually or in small groups to solve problems. If any of you are interested in learning more about how to do that, I highly recommend Two Second Lean. Um, I can share this presentation, it's got a direct link to it. All of his books are available in PDF so you can read through it. Uh, He's very enthusiastic and um, his approach kind of goes through a sort of manufacturing viewpoint, a manufacturing lens, but it has a lot of stuff that we can apply and use in our day to day. And that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about today. So two second lean is about finding small incremental ways to get to a better place as far as continuous improvement. And we talked about it a little bit in last week's training 
and I encourage you to check that out on the coaching kata and the improvement kata. Um, and because I think that that improvement kata and the coaching kata is so valuable, um, we'll be coming back to that a little bit later in this presentation. So where can we use this structured approach? So we can use it in any area that we are exploring continuous improvement. And that can mean uh, when we're looking into root cause, brainstorming, problem solving, decision making. Uh, Helen, I'll be sending out that link again at the end of the training. Um, process improvement, leadership management, strategic planning. So we often hear these discussed as tools. So what are the tools that we can use to get at these various elements of a continuous improvement mindset? Anyone um, have an example of a good root cause analysis tool or structured method? I can think of one or two that I really like. And if any of you have seen um, Five Whys, Fishbone, yeah, those are the two classic ones. Um, anyone that's sort of participated in or seen um, Helen's revised A3 with all the tools is going to have a really easy time with this little exercise. Uh, brainstorming. So what's an example of a structured brainstorming exercise? Because it's really easy to sit in a room and say, give me some brainstorms, but boy, that's just tapping the potential. How might we questions? Yeah, so uh, how might we questions are typical to a uh, human-centered design approach, which are really great. They're excellent ways to frame brainstorming questions. Affinity diagram, absolutely. So like a mind mapping exercise. We've had a lot of success with mind mapping. Marcel will tell you the um, absolute deluge of ideas she got after a mind mapping exercise. All right, so what are some, um, this one's a little more complex, but what's a problem solving approach. There's a really obvious one that we use in Lean. I'll give you a hint. It's um, roughly the size of a specific piece of paper. Process mapping. Sure, you can use it that way. Yeah, A3 is definitely the, the one that I was thinking of. And so you can come up with examples of all of these. And um, maybe I'll ask Helen to give me another link to her uh, she put together a really great A3 that's just got a whole list of tools for each segment of an A3 and where you can apply them, and I think it's a really useful resource. Um, but we can use tools, <laughs> thanks Helen, um, anytime, any place, any meeting. So what we're going to talk about today are some things that you can pull out anywhere, anytime, any place. You could be in a totally unstructured meeting. And you can hopefully use these tools either individually or in small groups or in existing meetings to sort of like bring lean to where you are. Um, so if your group is struggling with a problem, you can just pull it out. And there are a lot of lean tools, but we're going to talk about some really quick ones today that I really like. One that um, Teresa and I spent some time putting together that she'll walk you through, and another one that um, I uncovered in a book called Thinker Toys. Um, which if you've never read Thinker Toys, um, I have a copy of my Lean Library. When or if we get back into the office, I'd be happy to share my copy. Um, you can also get a copy over Interlibrary Loan, which is how um, I first discovered it. Thinker Toys is an absolutely incredible book with a bunch. Yeah, Thinker Toys. Thinker Toys, all one word. Thinker Toys. Um, and it's it's literally like, to tell you how important this tool is, it's on literally page five of the book. So I didn't have to go very far before this book changed my life. Um, but definitely encourage you to get that interlibrary loan. And um, or if you're in uh, National Life, borrow my copy. All right. So what's so bite sized about this? So these are things you can bust out individually or in small groups or work one on one with somebody with. We're going to practice two today. Um, we're going to spend the majority of the time on the Lean Along, which um, Teresa and I worked on. It's basically a platform for turning the two-second Lean idea of fix what bugs you and sort of moving that from a, it bugs me and it'll always bug me and I'll never be able to do anything with it into an improvement caught a mindset of how can we make this better? How can we improve it? I won't, I won't give away all the tips and tricks on that. Um, and then if we have time, we'll talk about TikTok, which is the great exercise that I am 
um, that's in Thinker Toys, and I'm happy to share with you guys. So I am going to go ahead and bring up the worksheet. Teresa, are you all set to walk us through? Yeah, I am. Um, so for those who don't know me, my name is Teresa Petzalt, um, and, and I work in the innovation group along with John. Um, and I think, John, are you going to drop a link to this in the chat so people can use it? Yes. Um, I or if you're like me that. and you prefer pen and paper, just go ahead and grab a notebook or some scrap paper around um, and a writing utensil. Um, because the great thing is we're all going to leave today with something to try. Um, so I'll give everyone a couple minutes to get set up. Uh, I'm doing I'm doing this the exact wrong way. All right. All right. This way you can all see how to attach and upload a file. My secret way of training you all on Teams. <laughs> Oops, not that. And a perfect example of how not to structure your folders. All right. So go ahead and um, grab a copy of this and you can follow along at home. They are also, yeah, um, so we've been sharing this file around quite a bit. Uh, all right, yeah, so Helen shared some. Do you have a copy that is not, Helen, uh, do you have a copy that's not in the Greenbelt Network? Because some of the people in this meeting are not in Greenbelt Network. So if you've got a separate place to store that stuff, if not, I can um, take care of that. All right, Teresa, right. whenever you're ready. And everyone is up and ready with their the Lean Along worksheet. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is think about what in our job makes us feel like this should be like this should just be easier. Every time I do it, I think to myself, why is this so hard? Um, so we'll take maybe two to three minutes and just write down some ideas right off the bat of stuff that feels like it it just shouldn't be this hard yeah what bugs you about your job um and if it helps for inspiration you can dive back about 10 minutes in your mind to thinking about those eight wastes and how you might see them in the work that you do yeah, and we included a couple in the worksheet. So um, there are all these notes right here. If you go ahead and click on them, it'll give you a little detail about what rework is. So defects, batching, and bottlenecks. Those are the three most classic ones. And those will always be there for you to look at and remember. Um, Tracy, I will go ahead and send you a separate copy. Um, is anyone else's chat frozen? You can try going to chat separately. Um, if you go to your chat window, it should be right up at the top of recent, and it'll say no title, but that's actually the chat for this training. All right. Does anyone have kind of a part of their work that they wrote down that they'd like to share, either over voice or in the chat. So Annette says getting information after the fact, causing change orders. I could definitely see that being annoying. So I have like a really, uh, this is Helen, hi. <laughs> I have a really weird and specific example, but our uh, our team over at AOT and the performance section has been uh, sort of trying to implement uh, sprint planning and management as part of uh, doing our work in a more agile way. But the way that it's sort of playing out right now is that we're spending 
about a uh, over like a two weeks a uh, two week period, almost a full day on uh, sprint planning and then stand up meetings and then retrospectives. And a lot of that is just waiting time where members of the team are just sitting in a meeting mm -hmm. uh, waiting to hear. And so and this is something that we're sort of actively experimenting and working on. But that is an observation any of us would make at the about the process at this time is that it may not be that the amount of time is uh, inappropriate. It's that the way that the time is being used is wasteful. Yeah, totally see that. Getting information from others for shared products. Yeah, getting information from others can certainly be a challenge. All right. Awesome. Lots of lots of things that definitely do look and sound like they could be easier than they are. Um, so on your individual sheet, um, look at the ideas that you came up with and circle or star or otherwise kind of notate which one you want to keep thinking about as we move forward kind of through the worksheet. Um, and we'll, you can always come back another time later to kind of think through another idea, but um, we'll, we'll work on one for now. This is bite sized lean. Um, so, with the idea that you're going to keep thinking about, kind of ask yourself, what about it bothers you? Um, why does it bother you when you think about the five whys? Um, are there kind of particular times or circumstances where it bothers you? Um, so, does it maybe only bother you when you also have to do X, Y, and Z? Um, or maybe it only bothers you in the summer because for some reason part of your process makes it worse in the summer. Um, and then are there places, so th those can be physical spaces or virtual spaces, where this kind of thing that you've noted really comes up. So is it not an issue in Excel but is a nightmare in your database or maybe um, your desk is just physically too small for the giant book that you need to consult um, or, you know, things like that. So just kind of dive into your idea and kind of use those prompts to learn a little bit more about what's what it is. Kind of add some add some definition to it. And we'll take just a few minutes. Yeah, the idea is being dig a little bit deeper. Like, you know it bothers you because it bothers you, but think about why. So you'll sort of see elements of the five whys or um, similar methodologies just kind of sprinkled in here if you squint and um, sort of hold your nose. The idea being that the language in this document is not steeped in lean. It's steeped in common language that anyone can follow. And uh, you can use, anyone can use this. At least that's the intent. Um, does anyone have something they'd like to share? Um, I know this part can feel really personal. So um, if you would like to keep it to yourself, don't feel obligated to share. Um, Thanks, Rebecca. It's really hard to do pacing when you can't see any of your participants. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and um, pretend the multiple spreadsheet issue is me because it's definitely not me and I've never seen multiple spreadsheets having the same information or anything like that. Um, I'd also add for 
for why do things bother me? Like this isn't a specific to this example, but like in the past when I've dealt with or when I've been trying to do this, things that bother me will give me this like just dready feeling that I just do not want to do it. And it's not it's hard to explain exactly what what is why it bothers me, but it'll be something that I like push to the end of the week and then just really struggle to focus on. And so things like that I can have been a good place to start as well, even if I can't be really specific about why it bothers me. Yeah, and that's a good point, Marcella. If any of these kind of prompts don't feel like they fit the situation that you're thinking about, um, feel welcome to just draw a big smiley face in that area um, and like just, you know, kind of skip over it and uh, maybe something will come to you later and you can fill it back in kind of as you explore more. Or maybe you're, you know, we kind of do this subconsciously. So you might have started out with a problem that you were like, you know, already had it wrapped up. Yeah, because we all have a tendency when we're dealing with something we don't like to just sort of bounce off of it or look away from it. And this is sort of to challenge that feeling and try and go a little deeper and find some understanding. Yeah, we've got some some good whys kind of in the chat here. Just inefficiency bothers us as humans and especially as people who are interested in improving. Um, and that um, sometimes someone's noticing that others don't value the work as much as they do. Um, unnecessary duplication. Yeah, no one no one feels good putting in a lot of work only to find out that that work has already been done somewhere else. Yeah. Customer frustration, more training needed. So customer frustration is a really interesting um, piece of feedback there. That's definitely something you want to put your hooks into and hold on. Lack of understanding the purpose of the task. Well, we've all had to do tasks we don't necessarily understand the value of ours personally. Um, kind of team dynamics can kind of be an issue also. Um, awesome. All right, and now we're going to really think about what part of this process or problem that we've identified and we've started thinking about, can we control or influence or directly impact? Um, so I notice a lot of times in my work, I'll be like, oh, like the whole system is broken and that's why it is how it is. Um, but that's not gonna be constructive to me being able to take ownership of my work and be able to make a change for the better. Um, so kind of think about what things what things you can control and what things how you can make. I don't know, John, can you help me with what I'm trying <laughs> to say out loud here? <laughs> sure. So um, it, it's easy to point to other people and say that they're the problem. It's a lot harder to look uh, at the part of the process that you control and say, how can I make this better? How can I influence this? How can I make a change? Because even if you don't have the part of the process that's maybe the biggest piece of it, um, to look at it and say, like, well, what can I do to make this better? Because sometimes, um, sometimes you taking a step forward and improving something can inspire somebody else. So that even if you don't have control, you can show them that you're willing to improve the process. That's true, Mercedes. Yeah. So. And this is just a rough guideline. We designed it to be as broad as possible to apply to as many situations as possible. Um, but no tool ever will be. And that's part of the reason why we moved beyond just using lean tools. And that's why we look at human centered design and Demaic and all these other platforms and methodologies because um, you don't want to overlook the right way to solve a problem or the most effective way to solve a problem because we can always hack something together, but 
is it really the best possible version of it? Inability to look at a problem with a new lens. This is how we do things. Yeah, that's definitely a um, that's definitely a challenge we all see, especially for those of us that are in continuous improvement. Yeah, absolutely. Amy says, make time to improve templates that bug her. When she does, it pays off. Yeah, I mean, it's work. Improvement is work. I, no one can tell you otherwise, but we reap the rewards when we do. Uh, Jody says, this year I tried soliciting information for an annual report from each person individually instead of the usual mass email. Much faster response from some, but not all. My only control is asking. Yeah, absolutely. So think about the realms of these problems that we have some control over. That's an important step. QA, QC, multiple documents. Yeah, absolutely, especially if that's QA, QC work you're doing. Um, you could also walk through this with a supervisor, and even if, um, even if you don't have control over a process, maybe between the two of you, you can get a bunch of people on the same page. Merging separate docs into a multifaceted spreadsheet for tracking. It's great. Um. And does everyone feel like they've kind of got a good handle on what part of the process they have control over. We'll move on to the next next part. Um, all right, so now is the part where we get to look at what would make it better. Um, so when you think about this thing that you like Marcella said or maybe pushing off because it just bothers you or there's something about it that you don't like what would awesome look like like what would make you what would this process need to look like for you to come into the office Monday morning excited to do it um, and you know if you like words use words if you like pictures use pictures if you like emojis use emojis um, the sky's the limit here this is for you um, Emojis may or may not be available in PDF form, but. And incidentally, you don't um, don't feel like your awesome needs to be constrained necessarily by like a time frame or um, current limitations. You know, set your vision. What is what does good look like? <laughs> That's great. Awesome would be an autonomous process. It doesn't require me to be involved at involved at all. That's a great one. I love automating away my processes. Not everyone does, but it's definitely a good feeling when you can do it. This is a good place to use exclamation points. <laughs> Ooh, Tracy, I like where yours is developing. That's great. Awesome. It's positive results seen by folks who have trouble envisioning change. Because now, when you see the next step, it'll all come together. Uh, Marcella says, the knowledge that I'm working to make it better really helps, especially when I put action into a new trick. And no less than 25 exclamation points, which is the perfect number at any given time. Mm -hmm. Especially for when we're describing what awesome looks like. Awesome looks like lots of exclamation points. Totally agree. A few 
few more seconds to finish up kind of putting putting the finishing exclamation points and smiley faces and thumbs up emojis kind of in our vision of awesome um, in the chat we have collecting feedback in real time um, kind of as an example by Microsoft Forms where it can be viewed and analyzed without going through multiple people. That sounds really awesome. Yeah, that's, that's great. I've done a lot of stuff taking Microsoft Forms content and pushing it to various places. It's really easy and convenient with um, Power Automate, which maybe I'll talk about at some point in the future if there's an appetite for that. All right, Teresa, what do we do next? So now that we know, great question, John. <laughs> um, now that we know what we can control and we know kind of where we're aiming for when we think about awesome, um, let's think about ways that we can make the process even just a little bit more awesome. So we don't have to get all the way there. Like we're not walking up to the baseball field having never played baseball before and like, hitting a home run or whatever like we're just i don't play baseball um but we we are just thinking like how do we walk onto the field how can we just get a little bit of the way there um and there's some some additional prompts in that box if you kind of need a little i don't know just a little little prompt to help get you towards there so how might you make this task more like a task that you already really like? Um, think about any obstacles that you can obviously say, like, I know sometimes when I'm thinking about a solution, I instinctively say this won't work because. So like challenge yourself to identify where you're saying that won't work because, and then reworking something that might overcome that. Um, really simply, could you just, set up a meeting with someone or involve a few other folks within your team or within your department or agency to help work on it with you. Um, and then if there were kind of really specific pain points that you identified when we were fleshing out the problem, are there ways that you could, could address that? And this is the big part and the hard part. So shout if you have questions um, and let us know in the chat or on voice as you come up with ideas. All right, so this one we might uh, give you some time to sort of parse a little bit on your own, but the idea is don't feel like you have to make the step. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca, for that. <laughs> Um, it's really hard to look at my PDF with um, Will Ferrell doing that. Um, so give it some thought as far as what are the steps that you could take to get to where you want to be. It doesn't have to be a here and now. It could be what are five minutes worth of work that I could do to make this process just a little bit better or a little bit better. And... Teresa has some great prompts here to help you uh, parse through what those kinds of steps might look like. And the most important thing, once you've kind of brainstormed some, some ideas, is to pick one and do it. Um, and at the end of the worksheet on the third page, there's a little table um, that's really simple to use. You just say, hey, what's today's date? What am I going to try this week? And then you put a calendar reminder on your calendar for next week. And at, when next week rolls around, you just ask yourself like, hey, this is what I wanted to do this week. This was the five minutes of time I wanted to spend. Did I do it? What happened? Did it work? Did it not work? What did I learn? And then put another reminder on your calendar for the next week, pick a new thing to try and keep going. So kind of hold yourself to actually making a change. Um, and of course, reach out to um, John and the Lean program if you feel like you get stuck or you want to add some structure around it in the form of coaching. Um, but I've noticed, especially for myself, if I don't write it down and put a little reminder to check in later, um, it's hard to remember when it's not part of your core job duties. Um, so just 
remind yourself every week or every two weeks that this is important to you and you want to keep working on it. Uh, it really is like a, a self-guided coaching experience. So the work that you're doing in here is much the same as um, I would take you through in the coaching kata, but if you're not comfortable with someone else looking over your shoulder on this work or you know, you have five minutes here, five minutes there, and you don't feel comfortable taking that next leap. This is a great way to sort of self-coach. And by the end of this, like, we've ended up at the improvement kata. And for those of you, again, that don't know what that is, I will drop it in the chat again. But check out the Lean Learning Series channel because the coaching kata training is on there, and I encourage you all to watch that. Any questions on this worksheet before we move on to the final stage of the training? And also, this is a first version of this worksheet. Um, Teresa and I spent a lot of time workshopping it and getting it into the state, but it is by no means perfect. Continuous improvement extends even to the work we do to continuously improve. Um, yeah, so for those of you in DEC, it will go um, on the DEC Teams page. It will go on um, my lean page, which should be accessible to the entire organization, meaning the state of Vermont. Um, I will share it in the ANR Green Belts network page, and that'll probably be a good start. We just didn't want to put it everywhere up until we have had a chance to talk through the worksheet and share the training with you all. And so we can link to that um, for people that want a little bit of guidance. All right. Um, so if there are no more questions, we'll go ahead and finish up. So I was going to do an actual exercise of TikTok, but I think I'd rather just talk about it for a couple minutes and then leave some time open at the end for questions. So uh, the final exercise is TikTok. And TikTok is very short, it's very quick, and it has huge benefits. So at any given point, if you happen to have a piece of paper or otherwise, um, you can just divide it, by, divide it down the middle Right, tick on one side, talk on the other side. You can see an example of it on your screen right now. So with tick, you can write down all of the fears or obstacles or challenges or all the reasons it won't work. Whatever it is, it can be you're in a meeting and you need to get in a, a, a headspace, but you're worried about all the challenges and just feeling overwhelmed. Just write them all down, write them all down on tick. Once you've got them done, review them, look them over, internalize them, think about um, why they're hurdles or obstacles to the thing you're trying to do. And then in talk, for each one, write down what you could do to overcome that fear or challenge. And it's really, really great. Uh, Tracy Collier mentioned that um, getting a positive attitude and belief that progress will be made. This is a great tool for getting people in the right mindset. Um, I have started brainstorming exercises with a TikTok. Um, it's really excellent for when you come in with a difficult problem and you know everyone's only going to be thinking about all the reasons it can't work or can't happen or that it's a great tool to use with your kids. Yeah, for sure. If your kid can write. I have a um, three-year-old, so he's um, not quite there yet. But yeah, that I could definitely see it having some uses for kids. But it's just a great way to get all your negative thoughts down and then challenge them one at a time. Like, what can we do to get past this? What can we do to overwhelm this? Like, what's an attitude or a direction or a positive vibe that we can account for this? And it's also really a great brainstorming tool. So it's another structured brainstorming exercise to, you know, outline all the challenges that you have to confront and then come up with ideas for how to confront each and every one of them. I can't understate um, how big of an impact it has, especially on um, getting people into a positive frame of mind. So both this tool and the last tool, they're both really great at 
taking the problems that we notice, that we see, that we are confronted with on a daily basis, and employing a strategy to overcome that, overwhelm that, turn those problems into positive change that we can bring. And I thought that was really important in um, in this current environment. So with that, I think we will go ahead and wrap and open the field up to any questions. So questions, concerns, recommendations, suggestions, anything you've got. I really appreciate you all coming today. And um, as is typical, I forgot to mention that my name is John Sears. I'm the Lean Coordinator for DEC. And um, so happy to be here with you guys today. And I will be here tomorrow also. Uh, not, not tomorrow, next week, Monday at 10 o'clock. That's when these trainings are. Next subject is, and I feel bad that I did not already have that ready. Uh, running an effective online meeting. So it's mainly centered on running an effective meeting, um, but with a little bit of online thrown in. And if you are curious what systems design is, we use a little bit of systems design to take an, a little bit of an unorthodox approach to getting effective meetings. Helen, absolutely a pleasure. Uh, John, you could use TikTok both times, um, depending on the context that you're looking at. So I have been in a lot of meetings where, um, so if you've ever, and, and we'll be talking about this in the next training, um, the six hats exercise for um, meetings. So black hats are people that propose all the reasons, like all the hurdles, all the challenges, all the things you can't get past. And when you're doing the six hats exercise, you can sort of move past it and like everyone will get a chance to provide those things because those are useful and valuable insights in overcoming challenges. Um, but sometimes you don't have the time or enough flexibility with the structure of a meeting to do something like that. This is a great way of getting participants past a series of concerns they might have because they could come in with a lot of thoughts and feelings. And it's a great opportunity for them to put all those on paper and, you know, turn those concerns into like here are some ways we can overcome them here's a positive spin to put that stuff everyone loves playing the black hat the black hat is the most fun to play um but it's everything else that's the hard part that really brings the change uh so the wonderful thing about tiktok amy is that um there are no limits on what you can put in there so you can put any kind of fear concern challenge internal external it, it, like most of these um, split down the middle types of tools, it's really open to whatever you want to use it for. Um, and what you can also do with it is that you can have people put things down there and then maybe just share a couple if you want to, but not have everyone go through their entire TikTok um, experience because everyone will be in a better mindset because they've written the things down or you can collect them afterwards if you want to so that you can um, put them all together. Um, it, there's a lot of potential ways you can employ TikTok. And I, I really like it. I like it to get people focused at the start. Yeah, I wouldn't um, center an entire exercise around just doing a TikTok because it's, it's meant to be handled really quick and personally or in like a group of one or two. I like to do them individually. Um, we could do a TikTok. If I have a, I'm, I'm very into hypothesis testing these days. So if I have a hypothesis that a lot of people have the same fear or the same set of fears, um, I might do it on the board so that everyone can see that tick and go ahead and do a talk. Um, I also use TikToks as punishments. So um, as again, Marcella can tell you, um, when we had a structured brainstorming exercise, every time I heard someone say, we can't do that, or we've already done that before, or um, we can't do it for this reason, I basically do an impromptu TikTok where um, I have them write down three things that they could do to overcome their obstacle that they've posed. 
So it's about getting people into this positive mindset. And also, like, sometimes you come up with really good ideas that way and capturing those ideas on a piece of paper. You can also do these on uh, OneNote very easily with just a, uh, yeah. TikTok's really easy to, to put down wherever, whenever. Um, and I encourage people to go ahead and try the worksheet. And if you have feedback on the worksheet, um, Teresa and I are happy to make changes and explore that space with you. And share it with your friends and individuals if they're struggling with a challenge, whether it be at home or in the office. Um, it's really great for turning those, I, I can't possibly see past this into a positive change. All right, so we're kind of at the end of today's training. I wanna thank you all so much for coming. Um, I really enjoy talking about this stuff. I will go ahead and put this up on the channel in a little bit. And uh, if you want people to see these trainings, feel free to send around the link to um, the channel because all of the trainings are going up there. And as you've seen, they all are kind of self-referential and stuff. So I hope you're getting a lot out of it. And if they, people can't make the Monday trainings, I still want to get this information out there. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Teresa, for walking everyone through the worksheet. Uh, Teresa, you got any final message? Have a great week, everyone. That is all I've got. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week.